Hey guys, Joe here, and that box behind me is a Dell. It's it. It's a Dell. And we're going to take a look at it in just a second. Hey guys, Joe here, and today I'm taking a look at a new product. Well, new to the person that's asking me to look at it for them. This is a Dell all-in-one computer, and I'm going to unbox it here, show you what came with this particular one, and we'll take a look at it and see if it's going to serve their purpose, which is not gaming or super high-end stuff like I do with my machines. It's more of a everyday driver, so let's see if it fulfills that need and want, and maybe see if it can game a little too. If you're new to the channel, thank you for visiting. Maybe consider subscribing, leaving me a like, a thumbs up, all that good stuff down below, a comment, and uh, maybe use my Amazon affiliate links. Get stuff like that computer behind me and help the channel grow. Much appreciated. Takes 10 seconds of your time. And this thumb is for each and every one of you. If you get my fingerprint, you can probably rob a bank. Probably not. I've been arrested. I'm on file. This box contains a computer as I said in the opening, for a friend, and they're just looking for an all-in-one machine that can do everything, not take up a lot of space, and probably just be an internet machine, probably some YouTube or Netflix or whatever. And it is a Dell Inspiron 22 3000 series all-in-one. This is actually a 3277, and it is a um, probably entry-level for the lineup. However, I did look it up, and what they paid for it versus what it still sells for is pretty dang impressive. I'll put up a picture from the website here. It's actually a $450 computer without some of the accessories it has with it. So that's interesting. I want to unbox it and we'll take a look at it and set it up. So it comes in a pretty plain box, as to be expected. I do like that they put a sticker in here that says if you need some help it does tell you where to go to get some help although you do have to log on to get said help so maybe it's not as good but yeah let's go ahead and take it out they ship it very well packed uh dense dense foam yet still pliable enough to have some play in it so let's see what else comes in the box in here we have the keyboard which is a keyboard and it was a white one okay Feels like a Dell. I use a Dell actually for my uh, gaming computer when it won't log into BIOS using my Corsair Strafe. We'll go ahead and set that aside. I'm also being careful with the packaging because it doesn't belong to me. A white optical mouse, which is pretty light and cheap feeling, but if again it does the job, that's all that matters. Satisfying clicks. It doesn't have a forward or a back button, but again, not a gaming mouse. Other half the power cord, and your user manual, and your warranty. It's good to hold on to those. Again, I don't need them, but uh, future person might. You have your stand. They said it was new, but this might have been like a display model because I see some scratching on it. And the unit itself. Oops. Try that again. Man, it's upside down. They shipped it to me upside down. I'm kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. It is upside down from the norm, but that's because it needs to have the stand put on it. It's a 22 inch or 21.5 inch display. Looking at it, it looks pretty simple. I'm gonna take you off the tripod and show you the I.O. before I put it up on the desk. Your rear I.O. is pretty darn standard, starting from the left side. You have your power input, you have an HDMI. I'll have to double check if that's just output or if that's input as well. You have an Ethernet jack. I'll check and see if that's a uh, gigabit Ethernet. Should be. One SS, uh, one SS, one SS Camaro. One USB Type 2 and two USB Type 3s. And a headphone jack. Otherwise, it's pretty clean. As you can see, this is actually a 3277 model. I'll show you how easy it is to assemble it and put it up on the table right now. As you can see, I have other projects I'm actually working on, including it's my buddy's MacBook, and I'm upgrading his RAM and his hard drive in it so that, wow, that's a, I mean, it's a strong hinge, but... But now back to what we were doing. If you look here, it's a very simple solution. The 
mount is actually connected to the system itself and this plate actually has a finger tightening thumb screw or a widget tightening thumb screw. Anybody that uses a camcorder or a tripod will know how these work. You just very simply line it up and start twisting. Couldn't be much easier than that. Next thing I'm going to do is put it up there. I do wish it had some sort of USB hub just for the accessories, the keyboard and the mouse, maybe something on the side away from the back because you lose two of the four USB spots just to run these. It's a little bit of a nitpick. I'm sure you could just run a uh, power or a USB adapter off of the powered USB 3.0. But all right, let's get into this. First boot. Hey, the light works. Should we jump into the BIOS first? I will say, fresh off the bat, it's a pretty bright screen. I'm gonna pull you in close. As is our normal, we're gonna be doing some filming off the screen old vision. Let's see what we got here. We have a Pentium 4415U, which I expected. That's a uh, newer style Pentium. It does have four gigabytes of RAM. It can be upgraded. Might be an upgrade, I suggest. And it looks like the first hard drive, as it's indicated, is a 1,000 gigabyte drive. So 99% sure that's going to be a spinning hard drive. Yep, that's all it has. All right, let's get out of here and we will see what the system does. Should be Windows 10 Home, which came standard on these computers. Like I said, they were about a $450 computer, even today. If on Dell's website you get a 2019. I can hear the hard drive actually booting up. Forgot to time it. While I'm waiting for it to boot up, this is just a regular black Dell keyboard, and this is the little bit more chiclet style white one they're using with their all-in-ones. I kind of like the thinness of the white one. It would be probably better if you're sitting in a chair just watching TV or something and you wanted something in your lap. Although it's not wireless, so it's not like the premium upgrade, so that's a little bit of a bummer. Yep. Definitely first boot. Yeah, definitely, definitely first boot. All right, this may take the rest of our lives, so I'll cut it and come back. All right, here we are. We are finally booted into Windows, and the main reason why it's taking so long is because of that hard drive. That is a very slow hard drive. Not 100% sure exactly what the speed of it is. I hope it's at least a 7200 RPM, being that it's a newer computer. I'm actually going to look at the model as that is still running because it's hampering the CPU. Okay. Don't know how well it's showing up, should be showing up fine, but as you can see, this is a Seagate one terabyte, uh, two and a half inch laptop spinning hard drive, which goes at 5,400 RPMs. So that's actually the first thing I'm gonna recommend gets upgraded in this computer. That will make a world of difference. But once it's done installing its Windows, blah, blah, blah stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and download Cinebench and see what this processor can actually do. The screen I'm actually pretty happy with. It's a little bit lighter in the camera, of course, because that's the way it picks up things, but in real life, it looks like a laptop screen. Um, I prefer an anti-glare screen like this. I can't turn off the screen, obviously, but it's pretty good viewing angles. I mean, I'm thinking it's an IPS display. I just don't want to keep opening stuff while the disc is just hampering everything. It does have Intel integrated HD 610 graphics, so we'll have to see if those are up to date. But yeah, you can see it's just borking because of the stupid hard drive. And it's full of bloatware. Mr. McAfee. I lied, it's not set up. I'm going to come back when it's finally officially done because this is a little annoying. It can't even delete a zero kilobyte file. It's been roughly 30 minutes now and it has finally calm down both on the disk and the CPU. Watching a couple of tutorials, watching some videos, and understanding what is capable of being upgraded, the internals of this are very much the size of a laptop board, basically right in the middle. And if they want me to do the upgrades, then we'll revisit it. That's why it has a two and a half inch laptop size drive in it, as well as the fact that it only has uh, the SODIMs, the smaller ones, and it's a four gig module that's in there. Now the good news is it does have two SODIM slots, which means I can put another one in there. So this is gonna be one of the biggest slowdowns, as you can see in the memory tab, hopefully you can see it. It actually says I only have 1.5 gigabytes of 
RAM available, which is also shared with the video card or the integrated GPU, so that's not good. In fact, it says that committed is 2.9 and 5.3, so my assumption is on the board there's some kind of NAND flash memory or flash RAM that's soldered directly to the board in addition to the two SODEM slots. Something to re-examine, but for the money she paid for this thing, a couple of small upgrades this thing could be pretty good. CPU, like I said, it's it's a Pentium, but at least it's hyper-threaded, so it's dual-core, four threads. Things like McAfee aren't even showing up in the startup, so that just means that they're just, they're just brute force on there. I may suggest just a fresh install of Windows 10 with none of this bloatware from Dell on it. Let's see how it does with just some web browsing. Not expecting very much. Let's see if it brings up my page, because it is logged in under my Google account right now. Look at my newest video. You subscribed yet? 677 videos, man. It's a lot of videos, including today's video upload. Hey guys, Joe here, and today you're going to be seeing the follow-up for that computer right there, and it's funny to get it in perspective. I'm actually pointing at a wall. Shut up. Looking at the stats for nerds. Although it's only dropped 1% of the frame so far, and that's at 1080p. I'm pretty impressed that once it actually gets going and ramped up, it seems to be okay, because we're at full screen 1080p, and it's running pretty good. 30 minute video, check it out. Although things like trying to close the window are arduously slow. Here's what we can do. It says it can take a PCIe NVMe, something like this Kingston drive. Not sponsored, but hey, you know, if you guys want to send me some free stuff, I'll review it. But a 240 gig uh, SSD M.2. It's not NVMe, so it's not going to be super fast. It's just going to be SATA speeds. But that's perfectly fine for this application. But that would hold the, the entire uh, Windows installation and leave plenty of room for your common applications and would probably fix the major problem. And I'll have to verify which version of the RAM it is, but another 4 gigs is 20 bucks. So basically for like 60 bucks, we can really up the capacity of this computer to make it a much more functional daily driver. Because 8 gigabytes will give it a very comfortable buffer between just running and running well. Alright, this is, this is just beyond borked. So I'm actually going to go ahead and pop an SSD in here and see what happens. I'm just going to use my Windows install SSD and see if anything works because that drive is making everything go like poop. It's the same problem my buddy has on his Mac and I'm waiting to solve that as well. Alright, I have my stopwatch up. Google Pixel 3 AXL. Great phone. Anyways, let's see how long it takes to boot into Windows starting right now. It took two minutes to shut down so I'm not anticipating it's going to be a very fast boot. Fast forward time. So we're on the desktop, but we're still not usable. That was a right click and it took that long. I'm just opening Task Manager. Let's see what happens if we try to open Windows. Alright, I'm going to take off 10 seconds for the whole password snafu. Didn't realize I needed to do that because of which version of Windows is registered to my accounts. But uh, yeah. So, just about 3 minutes to boot up. I just ran a Cinebench and it returned, well, four different, wildly different scores. And I didn't save them, I don't know why. Probably because this hard drive is not going to be its primary drive anymore. But, the scores I got were 203 with the hard drive spiked at 100% and the CPU just chugging along. 214, 27, or 207, and then 218. And as you can see, um, yeah, it's not a super high performer chip. 
I'm sure it's held back by the lack of RAM. I'm sure it's held back by the fact that it's got a ton of background processes running because its hard drive is trying to do things while I'm trying to run a Cinebench. But I did speak to the owner of the computer and they agreed that for the very minimal outlay to purchase the upgrade parts, it would be in their best interest to do that. Additionally, I am going to do an absolutely clean install of Windows 10. This version is a Dell installed version and it has so much pop-up and ads and bloatware. I mean, just looking through it, you've got, of course, McAfee, but then they pre-installed Netflix and all these games and crap. But you also have stuff like, um, what else do we have on here that, that caught me off guard? Dropbox promotions from like Mash Drop and stuff. That doesn't need to be on there. Dragon Mania. I mean, it's all crap that does not need to be on this one. Max Audio Pro doesn't need that. Uh, obviously, McAfee, it doesn't need that. It doesn't need, you know, this version of Netflix. Although, if they want it on there, I'll put it on there. But you got paid Wi-Fi and cellular. Why? Uh, you know, and then you got things like PowerPoint and Excel and stuff like that. You can easily get over that by using OpenOffice. It's free and it does everything that... Uh, Microsoft Office does and in fact I think these are all actually just um, sample versions anyways but yeah as you can see I'd probably say 60% of what's actually on the start menu is just junk junk that they want to sell you junk that that's bloatware and it's just it's not really going to be reusable at all but I wanted to record that score 218 is the one I got on video so that's one we're going to run with but for now it does me no good to continue trying to play like a game or something on this because it's just not going to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it down, I'm going to show you real quick the parts, and then it's for 60 bucks we're going to wind up with a system that's actually very usable. But depending on which version it is, I'm going to be throwing probably just a 120 gig, 240 gig something SSD in here. Uh, they can be had for as low as 30 bucks if it's just a regular SATA SSD. Uh, hopefully you can read that. That's on sale, $2 off, it's normally 30 bucks or you know there's a 240 gig for 40 bucks down there but I have to pop off the back and make sure which version it is so that I don't get the wrong one I also need to uh, get the right RAM because if you get the wrong RAM stick it's a pain in the butt to return it but we're talking 20 to 30 bucks depending on which one it is I mean look at that 20 bucks for a Crucial Ballistics 2400 megahertz DDR4 uh, SODIMM but again, I want to try to match what's in there. So if it happens to have something like the Samsung here or the Hynix Square, uh, Square Hynix, that's a video game. Uh, if it happens to have this Hynix 4-gig uh, RAM stick in there, then I'll just replace it with that. But either way, about 60 bucks, and it'll be up and running. So yeah, that's about it. Until I get those parts, I'm really kind of stuck here doing nothing with it. It's not a big deal. I don't mind it sitting here. Leave a comment down below. A thumbs up if you like this video and let me know what you would change in it. I think the two things I'm going to add to it are just about all it needs because I'm not taking anything out. I'm adding to it and it will become a better machine, especially for the money I know that they paid for it. So I think they got a good deal once it's upgraded. Come back for that. I have uh, another upgrade video for the same family um, and I'll show you what I'm doing on that one. It's a little bit different from my normal upgrades, but it's still something I thought I should show. And yeah, so until I get those parts, I'll talk to you later.